10 seconds to choose between two options, and then 20 seconds to do the matching activity. Are you ready for round one? Here we go. Would you rather go snowshoeing or tobogganing? If you said snowshoeing, you get to do butt kicks. And if you said tobogganing, you get to do standing elbows to knees. Great work. On to round two. Would you rather go downhill skiing or go snowboarding? If you said downhill skiing, you get to do cross countries. And if you said snowboarding, you get to do bunny jumps. For round three, would you rather eat snow or eat icicles? If you said eat snow, you get to hop on one foot. And if you said eat icicles, you get to skip in place. Next round, would you rather play ice hockey or would you rather go figure skating? If you said play hockey, you get to do jumping jacks. And if you would rather go figure skating, you get to do squat jumps. Okay, next round. Would you rather be stuck in goalie equipment for 24 hours or stuck in bobsledding spandex for 24 hours? If you said goalie equipment, you get to run in place. And if you said spandex, you get to do lunges. Nicely done. Would you rather build a snowman or build an igloo? If you said build a snowman, you get to do squat punches. If you said build an igloo, you get to do standing side crunches. kids and welcome back. So you've endured another week of online schooling and I'm sure you're missing your friends and maybe even your teachers, but I'm so glad that you've tuned in for another episode of SCF Kids Online. And today we have a rather large guest who's going to be joining us. So without further ado, let's jump in and see what happens next in our journey through the Bible. All right, you guys, so I have all these different containers in front of you today, and this is my empty container, as you can see. And how this is going to work is one of these containers has clean drinking water in it. The other ones, I wouldn't be drinking it if I were you. So can you guess which one has the clean, clean water in it? Just right up front, try and guess which one has the water in it. And then I'm gonna go through and we're gonna see which one has the clean drinking water. So do you have your, your choice picked out? Okay, so why don't we start with this one? This one looks delicious. Um, we're gonna dump them all in here to see what's inside. Oh, I would not be drinking that one if I were you. All right, which one should we pick next? Hmm, what about this one? 
Yep. Wouldn't be drinking that one either. This is some really nasty looking water. Uh, what about this one? Nope, wouldn't be drinking that one either. I mean, this one looks like a nice drinking cup. What do you say? Mm-hmm. Yep. Nice, clean drinking water. So um, today in our Bible story, this kind of reminds me of that because Samuel was having a hard time picking a new king because if you remember from last week, King Saul was no good. And so there was a need for a new king. But Samuel was looking at the outside, like all these beautiful cups look great on the outside, but he wasn't looking on the inside. Only God could see on the inside. Kind of like only I could see on the inside of these cups and I knew which one was clean and which one was the good cup. But God could see inside all of these people's hearts and he knew which one should be the next king. And so let's watch this video and see who God picks as the next king for the Israelites. Saul was the king of Israel, but he disobeyed God. So God chose a new king for Israel, a better king. God sent Samuel to Bethlehem to visit a man named Jesse. One of Jesse's sons would be Israel's next king. Jesse had eight sons. Jesse's oldest son was tall and handsome. When Samuel saw him, he thought, this must be the one God chose to be king. But God told Samuel, he's not the one. Do not pay attention to what he looks like. You look at what you can see on the outside, but I see the heart. One by one, Jesse's sons approached Samuel, but God had not chosen them either. Hmm. Do you have any more sons? Samuel asked. Yes, Jesse said. My youngest son, David, is in the field taking care of the sheep. Jesse sent for David. When David arrived, God told Samuel, he's the one. <laughs> Samuel anointed David. He poured oil on David's head to show God had chosen him to be the king. The spirit of the Lord was with David and Samuel went back home. When the Philistines gathered an army to fight Israel, King Saul got his army ready too. The Philistines had a great warrior named Goliath. Goliath shouted at the Israelites, send me your best man and we'll fight one-on-one. -on -one. But none of the Israelites wanted to fight Goliath. They were afraid of him. One day, Jesse told David to take food to the battlefield. David's brothers were in Israel's army. David saw Goliath and how the Israelites were so afraid. David turned to King Saul and said, I'll fight him. Aww. David had fought off lions and bears. He trusted God to keep him safe. Saul offered his armor to David, but it was too heavy. Instead, David chose five smooth stones from a nearby stream and met Goliath armed only with the stones and a slingshot. Goliath made fun of David because he was a young boy. But David said, You come to fight with a spear and sword, but I come to fight in the name of God. God always wins his battles. David ran toward Goliath. He slung a rock and hit Goliath in the forehead. Goliath fell face down and David killed him. The Israelites won the battle and the Philistines ran away. David did not look like a king or a mighty warrior, but God chose him to be king over Israel and gave him victory over Goliath. The Israelites were too weak 
and afraid to face Goliath. They needed David to fight on their behalf. In a similar way, though Jesus did not look like a warrior or a king, we need him to fight for us. Jesus gives us victory over sin and death. Wow, what a story. I think my favorite part was when God reminded Samuel that he doesn't look at the outward appearance the way that people do, but that he looks at our heart for who we really are. So God chose David to be the next king instead of Saul. Because if you remember from last week, Saul wasn't such a great king. But God saw David's heart and he saw that it was good. But David, he wasn't Jesse's oldest son or the strongest one, but his heart was what God was after. So God gave David the power to fight and defeat a giant by the name of Goliath. Something that the Israelites thought was too scary for them to do alone, but God helped David do it. Even though David, I'm sure, had some fears, he knew that God was bigger than any fear that he could have. And so I'm wondering, do you guys have some fears in your life? What are some things that you might be afraid of? I want you to take the next couple minutes before we dive into questions from kids to think about some of those fears that you might have in your life. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Today, Mia from Fall River, Massachusetts asks, I'm a Christian, but I still feel afraid a lot. Is it wrong to feel afraid? Mia, let me give you the big answer to that question right off the bat, and it is this. No, it's, it's not wrong to feel afraid. We all feel afraid about something. And really, I think it helps to think about today's Bible story to understand how we are supposed to handle the fear that we feel. Think about the story. So you had the Israelite army who were afraid of Goliath, which is understandable because he was huge. He's this great warrior. And all the Israelite warriors were afraid to go out and face him. And then David comes along and he sees that Goliath is making fun of God and he had no patience for that. So David goes out and he faces off and fights Goliath. Now here's the thing, surely David was still afraid. But here's the difference. The Israelite army was afraid and that caused them to fail to act on God's behalf. They sat there silently as, as God was mocked by Goliath. David, on the other hand, was afraid but still acted in faith, trusting in God, even though he was afraid. And there's the difference. It's okay for us to feel afraid, but what we don't want to have happen is that to paralyze us and be disobedient against what God has called us to do. So here's a big idea. When you're feeling afraid, remember that Jesus has gone before you, he has fought for you, he is with you, he has defeated the greatest enemies we have of sin and death. And so when we're afraid of things, we can remember that God has given us Jesus to be with us, to fight for us. So really, he's taking care of us, our greatest enemies. What do we have to be afraid of then? And so that should give us confidence and hope that we can still act even though we feel afraid. But there's another thing here, and that is this, that God has given us the Holy Spirit. Remember, the Holy Spirit is always with us. So when we feel afraid about something, we can pray and ask God to help us and ask the Holy Spirit to help give us courage that we need. Courage is not acting in the absence of fear. Courage is acting even when we do feel afraid. And that's what God has given us, the ability to be courageous for Him because we know who He is and what He has done and what He will do taking care of us even when we feel afraid. 
So what are you most afraid of? And how can trusting God help you overcome that fear that you feel? All right, guys, King David here, and uh, our giant Goliath has joined us today for our memory verse game. So Jenna has asked me to do a little bit of a game with you. Um, so I thought, why not bring my slingshot, my five smooth stones, and my buddy Goliath. So here's how today's memory verse game is gonna work. I am going to shoot my slingshot with my rocks at Goliath here. And you probably can't see from over there, but there's different things written on Goliath. So like jumping jacks, opera voice, eyes closed, lying on the ground. If I hit anywhere near one of those, that's what we're gonna do while we say the memory verse. So if we get close to jumping jacks, we're gonna do jumping jacks. All right, so I'm gonna take my position and I'm gonna get ready to sling these rocks at our giant Goliath. All right, I have covered my rock in paint so that we can see where we hit it. Count down with me in three, two, one. Oh, we're up near the top. Did you see that? That was a good shot. It is close, closest to hop on one foot, okay? So everybody up on one foot and let's say our verse together. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. Psalm 145, 13. Okay, we're ready for shot number two. Covering it in a nice coating of paint. And count down with me in three, two, one, uh oh, it's stuck in our slingshot. We're not gonna defeat Goliath like this. One, two, three. Oh, we missed Goliath, but we are closest to opera voice. So la 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 la, get up there nice and high and let's do it together. One, two, three. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. Psalm 145, 13. Okay, you guys, we are ready for round number three. One, two, three. Oh, right next to stick out your tongue. Everybody ready? One, two, three. Three. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. Psalm 145, 13. Yep, for another one? Okay, this is a new verse, so we should do it a few more times, I think. I'm gonna cover. I mean, we haven't defeated Goliath yet. So here we go. One, two, three. Ooh. Closest to eyes closed. Now this is gonna be a tricky one, seeing as we haven't quite learned the verse yet. So everybody close your eyes and see how well you do. One, two, three. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. Psalm 145, 13. How'd you do? That one was tricky. All right, let's give it one more shot. Slingshots ready. One, two, three. That's a tough one because it kind of splattered all over here. 
but I would say it was closest to lay on the ground. Now, in your house, it's probably a little bit warmer than out here in the snow. So, um, I'm gonna lie down and we're gonna read the verse together. One, two, three. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. Psalm 145, 13. Okay, you guys. Uh, yeah, that was a little bit chilly. Um, but I want to do the verse one more time with you. And I want you to do it as fast as a cheetah before I have to take off and, um, well, deal with those Israelites again. One, two, three. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. Psalm 145, 13. Well, I hope you guys were able to grab your Bible during that last little fun song. Um, so now that you have your Bible, I want you to open it up to Psalm chapter 9, and we're going to read verses 1 and 2 together. I'm going to give you a few minutes to find that in your Bible. That's Psalm 9, verse 1 to 2. It says, I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your goodness. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. So I want to spend the next few minutes worshiping God's goodness, like this verse says. We're going to rejoice and be glad and sing praises to his name because God is always good. The sun coming up and I can't help but think of your love. Oh, I, I see the trees as they sway and I think what a beautiful day. Even when the rain's pouring down, no, I'm not gonna frown. Cause you make everything a-okay. So every day I'm gonna give in the sky oh as sure as the moon's rising high yeah i know you'll never change no your love will always remain even when the rain's pouring down no i'm not gonna frown cause you
All right, it's time for us to wrap up week 41 of SCF Kids Online. Wait, why are you guys looking at me funny? Come on, just because I have toe socks on my hands doesn't make me crazy, does it? I mean, if I went into a store looking like this, would people look at me funny? It, they probably would, wouldn't they? Because as humans, we tend to look at the outward appearance instead of looking at the heart the way that God does, right? We learned that in our Bible story today. So even though I'm dressed up all crazy, what's inside my heart is what really counts. And today, what's inside my heart is that I want to teach you guys about Jesus and follow through God's word, this journey through the Bible that we're doing together. That's what's inside my heart, is I want to do that together with you, and I want to see you learn and grow as well as me learning and growing as we do it together. So, even though I look all crazy and some people might look at me a little funny, what's inside my heart and what God sees in my heart is what matters the most. So, I encourage you today. Don't judge people by the way that they look is one thing, but also make sure what's inside your heart is pleasing to God because that's what really matters in this life. All right, so let's pray together. Lord, thank you for seeing our hearts and sending Jesus to defeat sin for us. We are just like the Israelites. We're too weak to help ourselves. So help us to trust in Jesus as our perfect King of Kings. In Jesus' name. Amen.